Hi, this is Dr. Stanley Kim. Today, we will discuss pancreatic cancer. The pancreas produces digestive enzyme as well as insulin and other hormones. So the pancreas has a two components. Those components producing enzyme is called exocrine pancreas and the other endocrine pancreas. The famous Steve Jobs who died of pancreatic cancer actually uh, had endocrine pancreatic cancer. On the other hand, Supreme Court Justice Ginsburg died of pancreatic cancer, which is from exocrine components. Both lived over 10 years, and uh, um, that was already some years ago. Now, with the modern treatments and the diagnostic uh, tests, patients have much better outcome. Let's discuss more detail and thank you for watching. As I mentioned, the pancreas has two components. The exocrine pancreas, taking up 95% of all, produces digest enzymes such as amylase for carbohydrate, lipase for fat, trypsin and chymotrypsin for proteins. And the remaining 5% are endocrine pancreas, producing hormones such as insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, pancreatic polypeptides. Please look at these pictures. In the exocrine part of pancreas, there are acina cells. It's like a glandular cells producing and uh, secreting the pancreatic enzymes into the pancreatic ducts and eventually drained into the duodenum to mix foods for digestion. In the endocrine parts, there are Langerhans islands or called Langerhans islets. So inside the uh, island and the islet, there are hormone producing cells such as alpha cells producing glucagon, beta cells secreting insulin, delta cells, somatostatin and the F or PP cells, polypeptides. Please look at this picture again. Most of the pancreatic, uh, pancreatic cancers arise from the pancreatic duct. So ductal cell, uh, ductal adenocarcinoma is the most common type of pancreatic cancer. And about 60 to 70 percent arise, uh, locates in the uh, head part, and the remaining 20 percent, 25 percent in the body and the tail. What causes prostate cancer? The risk factors include cigarette smokings and the alcohol drinking as the risk to smokers, but not to non-smokers. Nevertheless, alcohol can cause chronic pancreatitis, which increase the risk of pancreatic cancer. Obesity, physical inactivity raise the risk. Healthy diet rich in fruits, veggie, fish, nuts is protective for the obese people. Coffee consumption is controversial as some studies show increased risk but others are not. H. pylori infection may increase the uh, risk slightly in non-blood type O uh, people. Hepatitis B and C may increase the risk slightly. Interestingly, patients with a diabetes have a higher risk of pancreatic cancer. In fact, about 25% of pancreatic cancer patients developed new onset diabetes, mostly type 2, within two years before diagnosis. Pancreatic cancer screening for general population is not recommended due to lifetime risk of pancreatic cancer is too low at uh, 1 out of 60. About 10% of pancreatic cancer patients have a family history. There are many genetic syndromes that raise the risk of pancreatic cancer. Familial pancreatic cancer, FPC, is defined when two of the first degree family members are diagnosed. There is no specific gene found. Depending on the number of family members having pancreatic cancer, the lifetime risk increased by 5 to 36 folds. Hereditary breast and ovarian cancer is well known. It's caused by BRCA gene and FALB gene mutations. Especially BRCA2 gene mutation is a higher risk than BRCA1. 
and the PALBs have a 15 times uh, normal risk. Pitts Jeffer syndrome caused by SDK11 mutation has a much higher risk, 100 up to 125 fold. Hereditary pancreatitis caused by PRSS1 gene mutations also has a very high risk. Lynch syndrome is caused by deficiency MMR uh, repair genes have about 10 times higher risk. Familial atypical multiple mole melanoma caused by CKDN2A gene mutation also has a high risk of cancer of pancreas. Ataxia telangiectasia leaf from many syndromes are also uh, associated with a higher risk. So all patients diagnosed with pancreatic cancer should have assessment of the risk for hereditary syndromes, as I mentioned here. But screening for general population is not recommended. Then who needs screening? Patients with known genetic syndromes and a strong family history of pancreatic cancer. Usually, uh, MRI with MRCP is done every year and alternate with the uh, endoscopy ultrasounds. It's to detect the early pancreatic cancer or pancreatic neoplasm with the malignant potentials, potentials. When to start the screening for those patients? Age about 35 when patients have a putz jeffer syndrome, but otherwise 6 to 60 to 50 years. Most pancreatic cancer patients have generalized weakness, weight loss, anorexia, and abdominal pain. As disease progresses, they develop jaundice, hepatomegaly, and even severe pain, back pain. Courvoisier sign is painless, palpable gallbladder with mild jaundice. As this picture shows, you can feel the enlarged gallbladder. It's due to gradual increase in gallbladder by cancerous obstruction of biliary uh, trees. And the seen in about 15% of patients with a pancreatic head cancer, but can be seen in cholangial carcinoma. Trousseau sign, rarely seen, is migrating thrombophlebitis, can be seen in other cancers like a gastric or lung cancer. As disease progresses, patients can develop ascites due to peritoneal metastasis, furcose nose, left the supraclavicular lymph node metastasis. Sister Mary Joseph node is umbilical, uh, umbilical metastasis. Schmidt's triad is seen in acina cell carcinoma. It's very rare, but it's an interesting syndrome. Uh, pancreatic paniculitis and uh, eosinophilia polyarthralgia. This is pancreatic paniculitis. Usually occurs in the legs. For imaging studies, ultrasound of abdomen is simple but highly sensitive in detecting large pancreatic cancer size bigger than 3 cm, but much less sensitive for smaller uh, tumors. CT scan of abdomen, especially multi-detector row CT, MDCT, is highly sensitive for detecting pancreatic cancer, but again, smaller ones are more difficult to see. ERCP is a very important endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. It's a highly sensitive and specific, and the biopsy and the brush cytology for tissue diagnosis can be done with about 60% cancer detection rate. And the biliary stent can be placed to relieve the obstructive jaundice, but it is invasive, having complications such as pancreatitis, bleeding, cholangitis, occurring in 1-2% of patients. Please look at this picture of ERCP. The scope is passed through the uh, stomach and to the duodenum. At the uh, uh, second portion of the duodenum at the ampulla, a small pancreatoscopy can be introduced to the pancreatic duct. MRI MRCP. It's better in defining the biliary and the pancreatic duct than even MR, uh, ERCP. And also it can detect hepatic metastatic lesions. It's a non-invasive and as good as uh, ERCP in pancreatic cancer, but it cannot obtain the 
uh, tissues for diagnosis. Please look at these pictures, MRCP. You can see the uh, gallbladder, uh, common bile duct, pancreatic ducts, and the duodenum here. Endoscopic ultrasound is highly sensitive. It can detect even small uh, tumors. And the uh, FNA can be done at the same time to obtain the tissue diagnosis. PET CT scan is, highly, uh, is slightly better than uh, MDCT in both sensitivity and the specificity. So it should, we should consider doing PET CT scan when you suspect the uh, metastatic disease. When the patients have high CA19-9 or large tumor or lymph node enlargement or even ascites. Also, it should be done before surgery to make sure patients don't have metastatic disease. The CA19-9 is the tumor marker for pancreatic cancer, and it's pretty good in sensitivity and the specificity. But the level of CA19-9 increase significantly in other medical conditions, such as cholangitis, pancreatitis, liver cirrhosis, and other types of cancers like cholangiocarcinoma, gastric colorectal cancer, lung cancer, and the hepatocellular carcinoma. About 96% of pancreatic cancer having the CA19-9 level over 1,000 are non-resectable. We should know that patients who have negative Lewis blood type will have a false negative results because CA19-9 is an antibody of this Lewis blood type. So any cells, including cancer cells of Lewis blood type negative patients, which occurs in 10% of general population, cannot manufacture CA19-9. The positive predictive value of CA19-9 is very low, so it's not suitable for a screening test for general population. But monitoring of CA19-9 levels are very useful to follow patients after surgery for recurrent disease or during chemotherapy for assessment of treatment response. The half-life of CA19-9 is 15 to 30 days, so it takes several weeks at least to see that level drop significantly. But CEA still can be used, but is less sensitive and specific. There are new markers to detect pancreatic cancer in early stage, but still they are not recommended to use in clinical practice yet. For diagnosis, tissue biopsy is necessary, which is done by CT or ultrasound guided needle biopsy, which gives pretty good sensitivity at 80 to 90 percent. But endoscopic ultrasound guided fine needle aspiration or biopsy is even better, giving 90 to 95 percent sensitivity. ERCP is a little bit less sensitive at 50 to 60 percent. Some patients may need to have diagnostic laparoscopy before surgery to make sure it is not uh, unresectable disease because CT or ultrasound MRI may not find the very small lesions or occult metastasis before surgery. And about 30% of otherwise resectable cases on CT are found unresectable when surgeon open up the abdomen. So the um, diagnostic laparoscopy uh, should be considered in high-risk patients like a large tumor bigger than 3 cm, CA19-9 higher than 100 without jaundice or cancer in the body or tail because those patients have a higher risk of occult peritoneal metastasis. Let's discuss pathology of exocrine pancreatic tumors. The WHO classification 2019 uh, the pancreatic tumor are classified into three categories, benign, pre-malignant, and malignant. Benign tumor is a cyst, uh, serous cyst adenoma. Pre-malignant is borderline tumors, glandular epi intraepithelial neoplasia, IPMN, MCN. IPMN is the intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. Those are uh, malignant potential and the MCN is also um, having malignant potential. It's uh, mucinous cystic neoplasm. Malignant 
most common malignant pancreatic tumor is ductal adenocarcinoma, accounting for about 90% of all pancreatic cancer. And the others are IPMN with associated invasive carcinoma, MCN with associated invasive carcinoma. And the solid pseudopapillary neoplasm, SPN, is the uh, malignant tumor, so it needs to be resected. And the others are uh, acina cell carcinoma, pancreaticoblastoma, serocyst adenocarcinoma, and the pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor will be discussed later. For staging, TNM system is used. T0, no evidence of primary tumor, TIS, carcinoma in situ, and the high grade of other uh, intraepithelial tumor we discussed in the previous slide. T1, the tumor size 2 cm or less. T2, uh, size between 2 to 4 cm. T3, uh, 4 cm or bigger. T4, tumor involves the uh, arterial system, including celiac axis, superior mesenteric artery, and the common hepatic artery, regardless of size. The N uh, staging, N1, 1, 2, 1, 2 3, regional lymph node metastasis, N2, four or more regional lymph node metastasis, M1 means distant metastasis. Uh, basically, stage one tumor uh, is the small tumors without lymph node metastasis. Stage two, A is a bigger tumor without lymph node metastasis. Stage two, B, any size of tumor uh, with the uh, N1 status, meaning 1 to 3 lymph node metastasis. But T4 belong to stage 3 here. And uh, any size of tumor uh, with the N2 uh, status belong to stage 3. And stage 4 distant metastasis. Resection of pancreatic cancer is the only way for potential cure, but about 30% of patients who underwent resection achieved the long-term uh, survival. And only 15 to 20% of patients are candidate for resection. So it's very important to know uh, whether the tumor is resectable or not. Contraindication for resection include metastatic disease and the tumor in case the uh, uh, superior mesenteric artery is more than 50% of uh, the circumferences, in other words, tumor in contact with the uh, superior mesenteric artery more than 180 degrees. If the tumor involves the uh, superior mesenteric vein or portal vein confluence causing occlusion or thrombosis, it's the uh, contraindication, but skillful surgeons can manage it to resect that dot parts and uh, make a reconstruction, and then it's resectable. So if the tumor uh, status is unreconstructable occlusion of superior mesenteric vein, then it's contraindicated. Direct invasion of inferior vena cava, aorta, ciliac axis, or hepatic arteries are contraindication. Vascular involvement may be treated with a neoadjuvant chemo or, or radiation therapy to shrink the tumor to make the tumor uh, resectable. And the borderline resectable or locally advanced disease also may be treated with a neoadjuvant therapy to uh, convert those unresectability to resectability. Those uh, borderline resectable diseases include uh, focal less than 50% encasement of superior, vena, superior mesenteric artery, short segment occlusion of superior mesenteric vein or uh, SMB portal vein confluence, venous narrowing without occlusion or reconstructable uh, superior mesenteric vein or, and uh, uh, portal vein or confluence occlusion. Positive peritoneal washing only without obvious metastatic lesions are considered as a metastatic disease is M1, but it's a controversial for resectability. So, some uh, experts try new adjuvant chemotherapy, hopefully to make it uh, uh, resectable. 
Neoadjuvant chemoradiation therapy improved the overall survival for borderline or locally advanced disease. About 70% of pancreatic cancers are located in the head of the pancreas, for which the Whipple procedure is done to remove the uh, uh, whole pancreatic cancer. It's, uh, it's pancreatic duodenectomy. Please look at these pictures. The part of the pancreas is resected to remove whole uh, pancreatic cancer in the head of the pancreas. And this pancreas is in contact with the common bile duct and the duodenum. So the surgeon resected that common bile duct along with the uh, gallbladder. And the distal part of the stomach, duodenum, and the uh, or, uh, or proximal part of the jejunum. And the remaining uh, parts are connected directly by direct anastomosis. But when you resect that distal part of the stomach, the patients may develop nutritional deficiencies because this is the very important area to absorb nutrients. And the bile reflux can occur very frequently. In order to prevent these complications, a pylorus preserving pancreatic duodectomy was developed. As you see these pictures, picture the uh, the pylorus is preserved by cutting at the uh, first part of the duodenum. The outcome was as good as the classic Whipple procedure. But even after Whipple procedure, the three-year survival was only 30%. But now, with the uh, adjuvant therapy after surgery, the survival improved to almost 50%. And the Whipple procedure causes high mortality rate, even 10 to 20%. However, recent clinical data show that mortality rate is less than 3% if it's done uh, at high volume centers. The complications include leakage of the bile, pancreatic juice, delayed gastric emptying, ileus, and other related uh, to surgery. About 15% of patients develop diabetes. But substantial amount of pancreas is remaining here, so not everybody develops diabetes. When the cancer locates in the body or tail, distal pancreatectomy with a splenectomy is done. Because the patients with pancreatic cancer in the body or tail don't develop early symptoms, the prognosis is uh, worse than cancer in the head because cancer is diagnosed at advanced stages. During surgery, standard lymphadenectomy is done, resect, removing that uh, lymph nodes around the pancreas, but extended lymphadenectomy showed no survival benefit. The new adjuvant therapy means giving chemo or chemo radiation before surgery, hoping to convert unresectable to resectable uh, tumors. You may ask me, the patients who had the surgery already had resectable disease, but about 30% of patients are found to have an unresectable disease when surgeon open up the abdomen. So by giving uh, chemo or chemo radiation upfront before surgery, you can actually improve the outcome. But the uh, survival benefit of this new adjuvant therapy in resectable disease is not firmly established. Very recently this year, a uh, large randomized study results was published. Patients with the resectable and the borderline resectable pancreatic cancers received the uh, new adjuvant chemo radiation therapy with the gemcitabine and the radiation and the head of surgery followed by gemcitabine uh, adjuvant therapy. The other groups just had an upfront surgery followed by gemcitabine adjuvant therapy. And then five-year oval survival was 20% uh, when uh, patients had a new adjuvant chemoradiation therapy versus only 6% in control group. But the indication is controversial yet. The NCCN guidelines say it should be considered, not mandatory, considered for high-risk potentially resectable tumors, which are 
large tumor, high CA19-9 levels, uh, large regional lymph node size. And the uh, imaging study uh, shows concerning findings or patient have excessive uh, weight loss or severe pain, which requires urgent uh, treatment intervention. But ESCO uh, guideline said it's not advised for potentially resectable tumors if no involvement of mesenteric vessels are found. The regimen for neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, include a fulfirinox or gemcitabine and the net uh, eclitaxel, which gives pretty good resectability, about 70%, and the two-year survival was about 50%. The adjuvant therapy in the management of pancreatic cancer means giving chemotherapy after surgery, hoping to eradicate any remaining cancer cells, and has proved to improve overall survival significantly. So it's recommended for all patients, including T1 and 0 disease, for a total of six months. When the patients receive the new adjuvant therapy, then uh, you have to prorate it. For example, new adjuvant therapy for two months, then you give an adjuvant therapy for four months to make a total of six months of treatment. The preferred regimen is modified for foreign X. For less fit patients, gemcitabine with a uh, capcitabine combination is recommended. What about giving chemo radiation therapy instead of chemotherapy? Well, the study uh, showed that chemo radiation is actually uh, worse so we don't use chemo radiation. Adjuvant chemo is given four to six weeks after surgery, but delayed the start around 12 weeks, even later was still better than surgery alone. After surgery, patients need to have a full restaging workup to make sure they have not developed metastatic disease because metastatic disease has a different management. I said the uh, 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 adjuvant therapy is recommended all patients, including T1 and 0, but there is exception. The SNS cell carcinoma has a better prognosis than typical ductal adenocarcinoma. So the SNS cell carcinoma, T1 and 0, may not need an adjuvant therapy. For locally advanced pancreatic cancer and metastatic pancreatic cancer, the first step is to obtain the molecular genomic profiling of tumor tissue. To discover any uh, targetable biomarkers with the mutations in HRR genes, homologous recombination repair genes, which include BRCA1 and 2, PALB, ATM, CHEC2, etc., as well as to discover any deficiency in uh, MMR, MSIH, HER2, BREF, FGFR, RET, and NTRACT. Homologous recombination repair gene deficiency means tumor is more sensitive to platinum-based chemotherapy, so patients need to have a Folforinox or a Folfox for less fit patients. And also tumor is sensitive to uh, PARP inhibitors, but clinically the PARP inhibitors have not shown clear efficacy in pancreatic cancer, unlike seen in breast cancer. If genetic test results are not available, still patients need to have a Folforinox or Folfox as an induction or new adjuvant chemotherapy. For HRR negative tumor, gemcitabine and uh, in combination with net paclitaxel is a preferred option. Some uh, medical centers use radiation therapy or chemoradiation or stir tactic body radiation therapy after chemotherapy, hoping to uh, convert the uh, unresectable to resectable tumors. But the efficacy is not as clear when compared with the highly effective Folforinox. Because Folforinox is so good, patients may not need to have a, uh, additional radiation therapy. After four or six months of neoadjuvant therapy, restaging is done to assess the response. If the tumor is converted to a resectable one, then surgery can be done. Majority of patients have locally advanced or metastatic disease at the time of first diagnosis, and only 15 to 20% have resectable disease. 
but palliative systemic therapy prolongs survival and improves quality of life. The first thing to do is to check if the tumor is positive for HRR, HRR deficiency gene mutation. HRR stands for homologous recombination repair. We studied in the previous slide. If the tumor is positive, then they are sensitive to platinum chemotherapy and the possibly PARF inhibitors. But the efficacy of PARP inhibitors is not well uh, established. For neuropathy, initial four months of Forinox followed by maintenance 5 fu leucovarin without uh, oxaloplatin may be considered. If progressed, then you can resume Forinox or use different regimen. For HRR status unknown patients, Forinox or mo uh, modified Forinox. Or for less fit patients, Falfox can uh, should be used. But if it's a negative HRR deficiency genes, gemcitabine and the uh, nepeclitaxel combination is the choice. For uh, unfit patients, single gemcitabine is used because adding capcitabine to gemcitabine didn't improve the overall survival. Although this combination is used for adjuvant therapy. However, if the bilirubin is high, 1.5 uh, times upper normal or above, then uh, please avoid gemcitabine because gemcitabine is hepatotoxic until the bilirubin levels goes down. When the tumor is positive for deficient MMR or um, microsatellite instability high, which occurs in about 1% of uh, patients, immune checkpoint inhibitor is in, uh, indicated. If KRAS G12C mutation positive, which occurs in 1 to 2% of pancreatic cancer, Sotoracid uh, showed the high disease control rate at 75%. A uh, couple of comments for genomic molecular biomarkers. New generation sequencing is usually done with the tumor tissues, but if the tumor tissue is not available or not sufficient, then a blood liquid biopsy can be done, although it has less sensitivity. Germline test for BRCA, uh, PALB, and other uh, HRR genes is more accurate than somatic gene test. And about 5% of pancreatic cancer patients have a germline mutation of BRCA or PALB. The five-year survival rate of stage 1A patients is about 40%, stage 1B, 34%, stage 2A, 28%, and stage 2B, 21%. The five-year survival of stage 3 patients is low at about 10%. Sometimes patients referred with a pancreatic mass Incidentally discovered by CT or MRI done for some other reasons. What would you do? You do MRI and the MRCP to identify the lesions that increase the risk of invasive cancer. Those lesions are large cysts, bigger than 1.5 cm, or uh, mixed solid and the cystic lesion, or the lesion with the main pancreatic duct dilatation more than 0.5 centimeter. If you see those, uh, see those lesions, then uh, patients need to have an endoscopic ultrasound and the FNA for tissue diagnosis. On the other hand, MRI or MRCP sometimes identify specific cyst types that need a resection, like a main duct IPMN. IPMN is the uh, intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm which has the um, malignant potential. Or MCN, mixed cystic neoplasm, which also has a malignant potential. But small uh, MCN may be followed uh, without surgery. Solid pseudopapillary neoplasm, SPN is always malignant, so it need to be resected. Otherwise, patients need yearly follow-ups with the MRI, MRCP. Now, let's discuss neuroendocrine tumors of pancreas, the disease of Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. 
Neuroendocrine tumors develop from neuroendocrine cells in the GI tract, lung, or pancreas. Those from pancreas are called pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Those from lung or GI tracts are called carcinoid tumors. Pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors used to be called islet cell tumors because the tumor originate from the cells inside the Langerhans islets. Please look at these pictures. Langerhans island or islets have alpha cells secreting glucagon, beta cell, insulin, and etc. Mostly sporadic, but can be associated with hereditary endocrine syndromes like multiple endocrine neoplasia 1, von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, neurofibromatosis type 1, tuberous sclerosis. WHO classified the pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors into three categories, well-differentiated, poorly differentiated, mixed neuroendocrine, non-neuroendocrine neoplasm. The well-differentiated pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are most common. It has a grade one, two, and three. Poorly differentiated uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are also called pancreatic neuroendocrine carcinoma. carcinoma. It has a small cell or a large cell type. The pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are also uh, divided by functioning or non-functioning type. Almost all pancreatic neuroendocrine carcinoma, the poorly differentiated ones, are non-functioning tumors. Functioning pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors include insulinoma, secreting excessive insulin causing hypoglycemia and related symptoms, even seizure. Chronic hypoglycemia can affect the mental condition, and some patients are misdiagnosed as neuropsychiatric disorder. Gastrinoma, uh, excreting excessive gastrins, and which stimulate acid secretion in the stomach, resulting in Zollinger Ellison syndrome, composed of peptic ulcer, acid reflux, diarrhea, and uh, weight loss. Patients with a glucagonoma uh, develops 4D syndrome, D, uh, diabetes D, dermatitis D, DVT D, and the depression D. VIP uh, OMA can cause WDHA syndrome, watery diarrhea, hypokalemia, and the achlorohydria. Somastostatinoma can uh, cause the uh, abdominal pain, diabetes, steatoria, weight loss by inhibiting other islet hormones. ACTH secreting tumors cause Cushing syndrome, and uh, some of them may excrete the serotonin causing carcinoid syndrome. When the tumor excrete parathyroid hormone, patients develop hyperglycemia. Non-functioning tumors have no clinical symptoms associated with excessive hormone secretion, but tumor mass related symptoms can develop like abdominal pain, anorexia, nausea, or weight loss. Non-functioning tumors can also produce the uh, chromogranins, neurospecific enolase, and the pancre pancreatic polypeptides. For imaging, CT scan is done. It's pretty good, although the small lesions are hard to detect. And the MRI, especially multiphasic MRIs, are much more sensitive in detecting metastatic liver lesions. Endoscopic ultrasound is highly sensitive, detect very small lesions, even duodenal gastrinoma. And the endoscopic ultrasound guided FNA can provide tissue diagnosis. Somatostatin receptor based imaging include bacterial scan using indium 11. It provides 50 to 90 percent accuracy. But I like to uh, introduce the gallium 68 dotantate PET CT scan, which is highly sensitive and specific. But be careful, the poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinoma 
usually do not uptake somatostatin. So arterial scan or gallium scan may not be useful with a sensitivity less than 50%. In this case, regular FDG PET CT is much more sensitive. Please look at this arterial scan. You can see that liver metastasis, multiple liver metastasis. And uh, this is gallium 68 dotatate PET CT scan. Very sensitive, multiple liver lesions and uh, probably the primary lesions in the small intestine here. The chromogranin A is the most commonly used tumor marker for neuroendocrine tumors. It's sensitive for both functioning and non-functioning advanced neuroendocrine tumors, and is useful to follow for treatment response or to check the tumor progression. But it's not sensitive for poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinomas. Due to less specificity, routine measurement in newly diagnosed patients is not recommended according to NCCN guidelines. The level of chromogranin A is falsely elevated when patients take proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole. So the patients need to stop taking proton pump inhibitors two weeks prior to testing for accurate results. Renal failure, inflammatory conditions, atrophic gastritis, hyperthyroidism, or various other solid cancers can falsely elevate the chromogranin A levels. Somatostatin analogs may reduce chromogranin A levels without tumor response, so you need to uh, check with the uh, imaging studies for tumor shrinkage. Pancreatic polypeptide is often used, excreted by non-hormone producing islet cells and elevated mostly in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, but it has low sensitivity. 24-hour urine 5-HIAA, hydroxyindole acetic acid, is elevated in serotonin-producing neuroendocrine tumors, mostly carcinoid tumor of mid-guts. The carcinoid tumors of hind-guts or foreguts do not excrete DOPA decarboxylase, which converts the serotonin to 5-HIAA. So carcinoid tumor of foregut and guts will not have a positive 5-HIAA. Falsely high levels can be seen when patients take tryptophan or serotonin-rich foods like turmeric, coffee, bananas, avocado, pineapple, kiwi, kiwi fruit, plum, walnut, pecan, tomatoes, or drugs like acetaminophen, cumeric acid, guafenicin, nicotine, caffeine. The 5-HIAA level is falsely low with aspirin, alcohol, heparin, imipramine, or levodopa. It's cumbersome to collect 24-hour urine, so gradually it is replaced by plasma 5-HIAA. Hormone secreted by neuroendocrine tumors like insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, VIP, levels can be uh, measured to see the disease activity or response to the treatment. For treatment of localized disease, surgery is the mainstay of treatment. For small tumor less than two centimeter without lymph node metastasis, tumor not close to pancreatic duct, Pancreatic preserving resection can be done. Otherwise, traditional pancreatic resection, such as Whipple's procedure with uh, lymphadenectomy is the standard therapy. When patients present with the uh, metastatic disease at the time of diagnosis, and if those metastases are limited uh, in limited numbers, like a two or three, and the tumors are well differentiated, then resection of both primary tumor and metastatic lesions can be considered. For refractory symptoms, despite systemic therapy, debulking surgery may be considered. Patients, for patients uh, with a functioning neuroendocrine tumor or carcinoid tumor requiring uh, surgery, you have to give prophylactic octreotide to prevent carcinoid crisis or 
other crises due to excessive excretion of hormones. Starting two weeks before and during and after uh, surgery. For glucagonoma, the risk of uh, DVT is high. Uh, prophylactic anticoagulation therapy is given. During surgery, cholecystectomy may be done if patients need long term octreotide therapy because octreotide therapy can cause gallstones, resulting in cholecystitis or cholangitis. Poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinoma needs neoadjuvant chemotherapy before surgery or adjuvant chemotherapy after surgery, platinum-based uh, chemotherapy. Or locally advanced uh, neuroendocrine carcinoma chemoradiation therapy is used. For esophageal or anorectal uh, neuroendocrine tumors, uh, chemoradiation therapy is given before uh, surgery, but patients may not need to have a surgery if they respond well. For metastatic or unresectable disease, somatostatin analogs are used. Those drugs are octreotide or lanreotide. They bind somatostatin receptors and inhibit peptide secretions. Octreoscan or gallium-68 dotatate PET scan will determine the presence of somatostatin receptors and predict the response to these drugs. But regardless of the test results, trial of somatostatin analogs is considered because of false negative results. If symptom relief is urgent, then uh, short-acting octreotide is used, 200 milligrams of cure IV three times a day. Because long-acting drugs like a somatostatin LAR 20 milligram IM two four weeks or lanreotide 120 milligram takes two weeks to be effective. This somatostatin or uh, lanreotide may control tumor growth, and the side effects are very mild. When the patients become refractory to Sandostatin analogs, then either chemotherapy or target therapy can be used. Chemotherapy, uh, the best one is capsidabine with a temazolamide. Or targeted therapy, sunitinib, sutent, and the Evorolimus affinitor are approved by FDA. Or poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinoma, platinum based chemotherapy is the choice. And if feasible, with the individually case-by-case -case, um, resection of metastatic disease, if feasible, may be considered. The peptide receptor radionuclide therapy involves a radionuclide like a lutetium-177 labeled to the somatostatin analogs and infused to the patient. Then the somatostatin analogs will find and bind to the somatostatin receptors on the surface of cancer cells. Then lutetium, like a radionuclide, irradiate and kill those cancer cells. The method is after octreo scan confirmed tumor uptake and the CBC and CMP confirmed the reasonable kidney or liver function, then uh, lutetium-177 dotatate are infused uh, over 30 minutes every two months for total four doses. The objective response rate is 40% and additional 40% achieve stable disease, so it's pretty good. Please look at these pictures. Before Lutatera, the uh, lutetium dotatate infusion, you can see a lot of uh, liver metastasis here, but after of uh, six months after four cycles of treatment, you can see pretty clear liver. Long-term side effects is uh, important to know, occurring in a two to three percent of patients. Acute myeloid leukemia, myelodysplastic syndrome, or myeloproliferative uh, neoplasms. 
Liver is the most common site of metastasis from neuroendocrine tumors. If feasible, surgical resection of metastatic liver lesions is preferred. Surgical resection is rarely done for poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinoma, though, because of high recurrence rate, but it may be done case by case after careful evaluation. Anatomic hepatectomy or non-anatomic multiple wedge resections are done as long as over 20% of liver volume and the two contiguous liver segments are preserved, but compensatory liver hypertrophy after resection may not be sufficient uh, to maintain the adequate liver function when patients have pre-existing cirrhosis, hepatitis, or fatty liver. Tumor debulking may be considered as long as over 90% of tumors can be resected. Orthotopic liver transplantation is not a standard therapy yet. Not enough study done. Local ablation therapy, including radiofrequency, microwave, or cryoablations are indicated for small lesions, three centimeter or less, can be done percutaneously or by laparoscopic procedure. It provides the symptomatic relief in 73% of patients within one week. Other regional therapy include hepatic artery chemoembolization or simple embolization with using gel foam powder with or without chemo drugs such as doxorubicin or and cisplatin, providing objective response rate of 20 to 70 percent and is more effective for pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Another original therapy include yttrium-90 radioembolization. The yttrium-90 is uh, put into the small beads and inject to the uh, hepatic artery. Objective response rate is 64%. Pretty good, but it can cause radiation fibrosis and the cirrhosis, which are, are rare. The prognosis depends on the stages of the disease. For example, patients with localized disease or well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor grade 1 have a very high uh, median oval survival rates, like a 20 or more than 30 years. However, the metastatic disease or uh, poorly differentiated uh, carcinoma patients have a much less median oval survival, like about one year. But this data is actually old, as you see that 2000, it's before we start using the new adjuvant or adjuvant uh, treatment. So the current prognosis or survival must be much better. It was delightful to see the bloomed daisies in front of my old clinic. And I remember the Bible uh, verse, the desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. May God bless all cancer patients. Thank you for watching.